oh, the places we will go. In essence, I want to talk to you about where robotics can take us as far as education goes of our young people. My name is Daish Bagley, and I do work for Hillsborough Community College. I am an entrepreneur. I own Tech Play Zone. And for the past 10 years, Tech Play Zone has been engaging students in science, technology, engineering, and math with the use of robotics, uh, microprocessors such as Arduino, video games such as Scratch, um, and so many other things to help kids get excited about science, technology, engineering, and math. I did bring my friend Jane here, and uh, Jane is a humanoid robot, and I'm hoping she'll introduce herself. Okay, Jane, what, 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 what's that? that? That's not the way you talk, right? Jane? Just joking. What a great looking audience. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. Oh. Thanks for bringing me Daish. Okay, you're very welcome, Jane. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Jane is going to help me demonstrate how we think young people can be engaged in science, technology, engineering, and math at a much younger age. Let's go back for a moment. Let's go back to Dick and Jane. You remember? See, spot, run, uh, go, Jane, go. This was the primary reader that I used as a first grader, I will not tell you how long ago that was, <laughs> to learn how to read. And the goals at that time was simply to read uh, with fluency some of the phonetic words, to begin to understand those memory words, those frequently uh, seen words, and, and to read with speed, right? And when you thought about Dick and Jane, there really weren't any plot twists. There wasn't any uh, character development. Dick and Jane had a, a few friends, Sue and John, but nothing remarkable. And the verbs that we saw in those books were not um, really action words. They were fairly simple at the time. Dick and Jane was created between uh, in, in the 1930s, and it was introduced to young students, typically first graders, between the 1930s and, uh, and the 70s. Um, as much as we enjoyed Dick and Jane, my first readers, I, actually, I really did enjoy reading those books, there were some criticisms about the storyline. Um, in particular, one of uh, the critics was Harold Henderson, and Harold Henderson said that students who were reading with Dick and Jane were falling far beyond their peers. Um, it wasn't really uh, helping American students to get ahead a in society. So now, think about the first graders in your life. Think about Florida standards. Think about what teachers are now asking parents to read at home with their students and the types of qualities those students should be taking from the book. Beyond just knowing uh, phonetic words, beyond simply understanding how to read with speed, first graders are asked to make predictions about the storyline. First graders are asked to look at the text and find evidence of what the author is trying to say. First graders are asked to look at the storyline and predict the plot and, uh, and, and, and intimate what they think will happen next. First graders that I know of actually are asking their parents to read them Harry Potter and the Hunger Games and, and they're going far beyond Dick and Jane. Where am I going with this? What I'm trying to say is that right now, the way we're introducing our students to science, technology, engineering, and math is a Dick and Jane approach. Yes, we're purchasing the smartphones and we're giving them the tablets, and we have laptops in every room, and every child can get on the internet. I mean, my goodness, a two-year-old can get on the iPad and play a game. But it's a Dick and Jane approach, because we're not asking students to really be critical thinkers with the technology. We're not asking them to be creators with the technology. In fact, um, as Mitchell Resnick from MIT has said, our students are probably more consumers of technology than they are creators with that technology. So what I would like to say, and what I propose, is that we really take a hard look at robots such as these, or Lego Mindstorms, or uh, Arduino microprocessors, or 3D printers, I don't care what the technology is, what I'm saying is that instead of putting those things simply in maker spaces, let's plop them smack dab in the middle of the classroom, train our educators on how to use them, and then introduce them to students at a much younger age. 
Right now what's happening when you ask students, what are you doing on the smartphone? What are you doing on your tablet? What do you do on your laptop? They tell you that they are playing games, playing apps, listening to music, watching television, uh, streaming videos, but they're not doing those things that first graders are asked to do in reading. They're not problem solving. They're not being critical thinkers. They're not analyzing problems and coming up with innovative solutions. And as much as I agree with the video that we saw about how games can be useful for learning and developing, I dare say that in a classroom where students are taught methods for problem solving and engineering and computer science, the level can be so much higher. So that's our, our news for today. A recent study was done by Common Sense, and Common Sense did a study of children's media usage from 2011, and then they did the same study um, in 2013. And as you can see on the screen, um, there, are some, there are some increases in the usage of media by students. And I'm happy about that. I'm not saying that we should take away their media. By all means, we want tech-savvy students. What I'm saying is that in the classroom, students can be really educated about how to use technology to get them interested and engaged and confident in science, technology, engineering, and math. So here we come. Here's our robot. Um, we call her Jane affectionately, but she came from the, um, from the, the, the corporation as, um, as now. And she's going to stand up. Nice. Thank you, Jean. And so what I think we should do is start to talk to students about the different sensors that are involved with Excuse Jane. Me. What I'm hoping... Excuse me, Dish. May I interrupt? Uh, okay. Yes, Jane? Yes? Perhaps it would be better if I told the audience all about me. Okay. Well, if that's what you want to do, would it be okay if Jane talked to you guys about herself? Okay. Go for it, Jane. Hello, my name is Now. I'm a humanoid robot, imagined and designed by Aldebaran Robotics. I come with my own software and I'm fully programmable. I'm autonomous and I can connect to the internet through a Wi-Fi. I can recognize your face, answer your questions, play music, grab objects, and even play soccer like a pro. <laughs> I've more than 7,000 brothers and sisters in use all around the world in universities and research laboratories. Do you want more technical details? Yes. All right. <laughs> Counting every articulation in my body, I have 25 degrees of freedom. The sonars located on my torso allow me to detect obstacles that I might encounter. My two cameras give me an enlarged field of vision. Thanks to them, I can look right in front of me. <laughs> or at my feet, you know, to avoid walking where I should not. The four microphones around my head allow me to detect the origin of sounds nearby. Oh, while I think about it, there are four force-sensitive resistors under each of my feet. Combined with my inertial sensor, they help me keep my balance. I can use some LEDs to express various emotions and interact with you. Oh, LEDs. Your lights. Oh, uh, red is anger, I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And you, on the other hand, can use my tactile sensors, on the head for example, to pass me some information. Well, I guess that is enough for the moment. Okay. Thank you for listening to me. Nice. You guys give Jane a round of applause. <laughs> Jane, I think I'm a, a little concerned that I'm making the, the proposal that students as young as seven years old can actually program you. And now you've just done all of these amazing things, and I'm not so sure if the audience will believe me that when I say that a first grader can program you. Dish, why don't you show the audience how easy it is to program me? 
I think oh. that it's so easy that a first grader could do it. Okay, I think that's a great idea. I'm going to do that. I'm going to show you the interface that we use to program a now robot such as Jane. And so while you're looking at it on the screen, I'm actually going to use my computer to show you how we can get Jane to do a very simple command. This particular language is called choreograph, and choreograph is very much drag and drop, exactly what first graders are accustomed to right about now. The interface allows behaviors to be dragged onto the screen, and then sensors to also be used. So the sensor that you're looking at now on the big screen is called the tactile head. Jane has three sensors on the top of her head, front, middle, and back easy enough for a first grader to understand. And when those sensors are pressed, you can program the robot to perform a certain behavior. So in this particular case, we uh, put on the screen the tactile head sensor so that if we press Jane's, uh, the, the program, the button on, in the middle, then uh, Jane should wave hello to you guys. And so that's what um, we're going to do. I've already sent the program through a wireless connection that we have established here so that the code goes from my computer um, to, to Jane. So typically the code is you press, you send the code, you press it, and then J Jane waves hello. Easy enough for any first grader to understand. Why does it matter? It matters because students right now between the ages of five and six in Estonia are programming robots just like Jane. In their classrooms, they're learning how to work with sensors, how to deal with for loops and conditional statements, how to understand uh, the behaviors of various robots. And am I saying that they're going to then go out and get jobs working with robotics? Absolutely not. What I am saying is students as young as five and six are learning the skills needed to excel in an accelerated society. And just by simply giving our students a tablet or um, an iPad and saying, now you're engaging in STEM is a misnomer. Really, it's a Dick and Jane approach. What we really want to have happen is we want students to be engaged in, in robotics, understanding how to program in the classroom and in maker spaces and in libraries and at home so that they can then become more interested in pursuing those things in middle school and high school. There's no possible way for us to have the number of STEM students that we want in the United States if we don't start younger. It would be really nice to think that as a young person, I'm going to be intuitive enough to say I'm going to go to the library and find something that I like. It typically doesn't happen that way. Students don't go to the library to learn to read. Students go to school to learn to read. And because they're fascinated by reading, they then go to the library to find more. In our classrooms today, we need to have educators and administrators and parents who are insisting upon higher order thinking using robotics, whatever robot that we choose, Lego, Arduino, um, Makey Makey, <laughs> or the now, in order to dis help children discover how exciting science, technology, engineering, and math can be. And then once they're in high school, middle and high school, we expect the same type of um, activities for them. And I'm going to go so far as to say undergraduate school. There's no point in me encouraging all of these young people to go off and choose STEM majors only to have them enter an undergraduate classroom where some professor is seeking to weed them out by giving them complex topics that they can't understand. If students are excited about learning, why don't we simply give them the hands-on type of learning that they love inside the undergraduate classrooms? And there are multiple topics that can be learned. Robot manipulators, vision systems, controllers, all of the very um, complicated topics that undergraduate engineers and computer science majors need to learn can be learned with the use of robotics. And that's what we're, we're, pro we're proponents of. We need it. We need more programmers. Um, studies show that there are going to be more programming jobs open than the number of students to fulfill those jobs. We say that we want to be the number one nation. Well, we actually have to take a stand and figure out how we will become the number one nation. Let's use robotics as a hook to hook students in at early ages. Thank you.